Hello everyone, welcome to Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. The important news and editorial that will be relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 16th of March. The first important news that is the Bar Council of India has permitted foreign lawyers and firm to practice. Second, House panel questions for the huge cut which was there in the total budget allocation for Manrega. Third is Eurasian Otter Raise Hop for JNK Stream. We'll see the detail about this species and, and mammal. The second last is India revised foreign trade policy to be announced soon, which was further no, for 2015 to 20 was extended. Now government is looking forward with the new foreign policy. And the last is an editorial, the village by the board. So we'll see the detail from the examination perspective, apart from the news and editorial, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming problems examination. So without any further delay, let's get started. And before I begin the session, those of you who are new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful for examination purposes, do press a like button. And those of you who are looking forward for prelims test series 2023, the upcoming prelims, you need to have a good quality of questions to practice. So we at Apti Plus are providing you 60 high quality tests through our prelims test series that will provide you 6,000 plus questions. And these are the questions which is aligned with the syllabus and even to the parameters of UPSC. So it's very important to practice a lot many questions before you appear for the real examination, right? So this prelims test series available both online and offline. For more details, you can refer to the description section of this video where I've provided a dedicated link to redirect the page and read further about the test series. Now, starting the session with the first news of the day, that is BCI permits foreign lawyer and foreign firms to practice in India. Something very important for general studies paper two under the subtopic that is structure, organization, functions of executive and judiciary. So why we are discussing this news because recently in a move to transform the legal landscape in the country, the Bar Council of India, which is an apex body for regulating the part of bar and advocates, has opened the law practices in India to foreign lawyers and law firms. So the part of foreign contribution can be seen in India with certain limitations and restrictions. We'll see what are the restrictions and limitations that has been decided by the BCI, that is the Bar Council of India in the later part of the video. Now, this come after five years when Supreme Court has permitted the entry of foreign lawyers and firms to operate on a temporary basis and left the discretions to BCI to formulate the part of policies and roadmap. So Supreme Court ne apne green ascent di hai that the part of the foreign lawyers and firms can operate, but the roadmap or the rules has to come up by the BCI that is the Bar Council of India. Now, the area of practice of the foreign lawyers or foreign firm shall be laid down by the Bar Council of India. Still, the detailed part of the roadmap has not yet been released. It will be released very soon, but more or less a broad area or the broad allowed area has been given by the Bar Council of India. Now, about the Bar Council of India, something relevant because this is a news. So there might be a questions about the BCI. So if you see the Bar Council of India, it is an apex disciplinary regulatory body for legal education and profession in the country. It's a statutory body that is created by the parliament under the Advocate Act of 1961 to safeguard and represent Indian bar. Right? There are several bar for state. We have a state bar at a center level. We have Bar Council of India. So this is something very important. Like for, for lawyers, it, it is something that they have to get registered with bar. Right. So it also sets standard for the legal education grant recognitions to the universities whose degree in law will serve as a qualifications for enrollment as an advocate. 
So for an advocate, you need to have a law degree, right? BLLB, BLLB is a degree that is essentially required to become an advocate or a lawyer. Now, in addition, it performs certain representative functions to protect the right and privilege of the interest of the advocate that uh, whomsoever is practicing either in the lower court, high court or supreme court. So through certain rules and regulation and also create for fund providing financial assistance to organize welfare scheme for them. For them, I mean the advocates and lawyers. Now, only advisory role has been allowed. The recent permission that the BCI, that is the Bar Council of India, has given to the foreign firms. So they will be only allowed as an advisory role. So as per the latest rule, the foreign lawyers and firm can only plan for advisory role to their clients, making renewable for the registration mandatory every five years. This is subject to renewal every five years. This will be not a one time grant that will be given. They have to get an approval and renewal every five years. Now, the rules are framed in such a way that it did not jeopardize the part and prospects for Indian lawyer. We have to see the interest of Indian lawyer as well, who is full fledged practicing in the Indian judiciary system. And the foreign lawyers or firm are allowed to practice in the transnational work even in the corporate work that will be there for the joint ventures, mergers, acquisitions, intellectual property matters, drafting of contracts and related matters on reciprocal basis. Now, restrictions, what are the things that has been completely restricted? There can be a direct question in prelims examination that which are the things which are allowed and which are the things that are not allowed. Even this is relevant for your mains also, right? So I've told you what was allowed. Now, what is restricted that the advocate firms appearing before the judicial forum, including the tribunal and other statutory or regulatory authority. So they will not be allowed to appear in these bodies. Now, rules also clarify that the lawyer shall not be involved to do any work pertaining to the property linked matter. So anything that is related to the property will not be allowed to handle by the foreign firms or lawyers. Now, moving to the other news, House panel questions huge cut in the outlay for Manrega total budget. This was something which created a lot more controversy with the stakeholders and expert. So something relevant for general studies paper two under the subtopic that is welfare schemes for the vulnerable section of the population by the center and the state government. So as we know, and I have already made a discussion on this regard that the union budget 2023 and 24 had a sharp decrease in terms of the total allocations for the rural employment scheme. Specifically, we're discussing Manrega here. And only 60,000 crore rupees has been allocated to Manrega this year, about 33% below the revised estimate, which was there for the fiscal. So if it, the number is asked, you might, you know, this, this might be relevant for examination. The number is 33% below the budget estimates. Now, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee provide right to work uh, to the surge deprived section of the society of the rural populace who are willing to work, right? So there's certain number of days, 120 days are there, which they provide with the work. So this is under, the program is under the jurisdictions of Ministry of Rural Development, Government of India. And for this time, not only Manrega, but there are other major schemes which has seen a major cut in the total estimates. So if you see Manrega here, there's a 25% cut, we'll write from 98,000 crore rupees, only 73,000 crore rupees was for the budget estimate. And for other schemes like food subsidy to the Food Corporation of India, these are also seen the reductions. Urea subsidies has also seen reductions. Food subsidies for decentralized procurement of the food grid under National Food Security Act. And nutrient based subsidy has also seen the reductions. So these were some of the major schemes in the budget estimate for 2022 and 23. Now, there's a report by the Parliamentary Standing Committee and they have raised concern about the government intentions of reducing the total budget allocation that they have submitted it to the Rajya Sabha. And they've said that the reductions is by 229,400 crore rupees, which was compared in the revised budget estimates. And the ministry in this response has said 
that the scheme is demand driven and if required there will be higher allocation so this is what the ministry has categorically noted that if demand increases then there will be budget allocation that will also be increasing right now if you see the part of the parliamentary standing committee on rural development they have also seek rationale behind the reductions of the total allocations and considering the key role that the manrega has played specifically in the rural area because it has provided employment in the rural areas and lot many people are directly dependent on this scheme the panel has also raised expert over the distress for the delay in the wages that is going through the various state government so there are many reasons for the delay among one that i wanted to tell you is very important that is with regards to the problem of attendance right so what government did government has incorporated the part of digital capturing of the attendance and even the part of geo tagging is also there right so in this context many people are not aware of the technological part right so this has created a lot many problems and even this has to be updated to the national mobile monitoring system which is tracking the part of attendance for each and every individual working so it's a mobile based applications जहाँ पे कई लोगों को दिक्कत आई अपने रजिस्ट्रेशन करने में अपने अटेंडेंस को मैंडेटरी बताने में एंड इवन दे आर फेस लॉट मेनी प्रॉब्लम एंड दिस इज आल्सो वन ऑफ द सिग्निफिकेंट इश्यूज दैट इज अराइजिंग अक्रॉस द कंट्री अपार्ट फ्रॉम दिस द टोटल ओवरऑल बजट व्हिच इज देयर इज अ प्रॉब्लम बिकॉज उस बजट से पूरी वेजेस भी कंप्लीट नहीं हो पा रही मूविंग टू दर न्यूज यूरेशियन ऑटर रेज होप for jnk streams something important for jnk studies paper 3 under the sub topic that is conservation environmental pollutions degradation and eia so recently a group of scientists from the university of jammu they have found presence of eurasian water in jammu and kashmir region right and this was specifically caught by an infrared cameras you can see this image over here this is an infrared captured image so this was there at the tributary of chenab river at the chenab catchment of jammu and kashmir right the first photographic reports of otter was indicating that it has not completely lost in the jammu kashmir stream region so there's certain indication when it comes to the presence of otter is there i'll tell you the detail of that now about otter this might be relevant for prelims examination because this is the news so the otters are the member of mammalian family and they are carnivorous these two are the factual important information take a note of this now again they are regarded as a flagship species and indicators of high quality aquatic habitat so this say this is a particular indication and evident of the fact that the region has a good quality of waters and aquatic system now otter are found to have over the world specifically in the country like australia new zealand madagascar and oceania iceland now in india specifically they were found in jammu and kashmir region aur kuch chilka ke region mein inke dusri varieties ki jo family ki hai wo bhi pai gayi hai it was found in the place in the south and southern east asia and india is home to three species three to 13 species of otter found worldwide now protection status ki agar baat kare in iucn they are under near threat and even for the appendix 1 uh, they are in the sites and indian wildlife protection act ki agar baat kare this is under schedule 2 now moving to the other news india's revised foreign trade policy to be announced soon this is what the government has said this is relevant for general studies paper 2 paper 3 precisely that is indian economy and issues related to planning mobilization resource growth and development so after a long uh, delay uh, we will not call it delay because government has said that the the delay was intentional because of the covid 19 so after the reboot that india is looking forward with a new foreign foreign trade policy and this was there since 2015 so the revision has to be made the commerce ministry has planned to announce a new trade policy by september uh, basically last september is a badhai gayi thi jab foreign trade policy jo 2020 mein expire ho rahi hai further 3 year ki extension di gayi and now the government is looking forward that they will come up with the new foreign trade policy which will be having a parameters a road map that is set for india 
Now, reasons for extensions, as I've told you, uh, the first and foremost reason was COVID-19. And the other reason was tightening of monetary policy conditions due to COVID-19, currency volatility, which is there in the market. And even the US Fed had increased their rates. And uh, last but not the least is Russia's Ukraine conflict that was escalating at that point of time. Now, what will be the roadmap for this policy with the new foreign trade policy? What would be the part of the new foreign trade policy? So it will call for hand holding the micro, small and medium enterprises to the financial capabilities, set up special zone for e-commerce export, development of new mechanism to support the services related to artificial intelligence and internet of thing, right? So these will be the part that will be taken care of and the policy will also enhance where economic growth, job creation will be given priority and even differential in the duty import will be prioritized which will be under the duty free import authorizations and the export promotional capital goods program. Moving to the editorial of the day, the village by the border, something important for general studies paper too, that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So what we're going to discuss under this editorial, first talking about the theme, the theme is Vibrant Village Program, which is again a very important program by government of India. And in this editorial, I'll be making you understand with the issues like background, we'll see the aim of Vibrant Village Program, the future plan of the government of India and the way forward. So before I begin the discussion part, just to give you a background that in the recent union budget, the government has improved, uh, basically approved the part of center sponsored scheme for that scheme is known as Vibrant Village Program, right? And the financial year for this program is till 2023 till 26, right? The financial allocation for the total amount is 4,800 crore rupees. And what is this program meant for? Kya kya advantages hongi as program kit call for comprehensive development of the village on the blocks of the northern borders, such as improving the quality of life of the people and improving the border village areas. Or in this context, in 2018, the Parliamentary Standing Committee ne highlight kiya tha that illiteracy, backwardness and lack of basic facilities in our border area is a cause. Of, basically, it's a matter of great concern. Now, what is the aim of Vibrant Village Program? We'll see the aim in number of formats, which important points ko segregate kiya so that you are able to understand what is the important, what is the main aim of the Vibrant Village Program. So among first is the strengthening the basic infrastructure. This program ki jo core essence hai, jahan pe vibrant village program ke through strengthen ki jayegi basic infrastructures ko line of actual control ki region. And in this article, the writer also conveys the same message that he belongs to a specific uh, remote area where uh, this problem has been evident for a long, right? Now, after the implementation of the scheme, it will provide fund for the development of essential infrastructure where livelihood opportunities will be increased 19 districts across 46 border and part of the four state and one unit will be taken into the consideration. The first phase will have 663 villages that will be taken under the program. It will be gradually increased depending upon the allocations and the requirement. Reverting the out migrations, is that through those who migrate for their livelihood from one place to another, will also be reversed because government is looking forward to you know, re reverse the out migrations in the village area and improve the security for the borders. And basic amenities is that the border village are being provided with all basic amenities, including the modern housing for good roads, water, electricity supply, good educations, health and communications, and access to do the sun channel. These were some of the basic necessities that the government feel must be provided. So this has been incorporated as a part under the village vibrant program. And last but not least is the skill development and social entrepreneurship. This is again very significant in the longer run, in a long term target. This is very important. So the promotions of skill will be there with the social entrepreneurship, empowerment of both youth and women. Skill development and entrepreneurship to promote tourism and promotions of local culture 
and traditional knowledge will be emphasized. It will also develop the sustainable eco business, which call for basically organic farming and sustainable agriculture with one village, one product concept. So these are some of the important aim of the village vibrant program. Now future plan ki agar baat kare, basically the government of India is looking forward to incorporate the concept uh, where the border areas will be developed or khas karke kuch aise India ke borders jo ki China, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh, Bhutan or Myanmar ke saath lage, un borders ko jyada develop karne ki baat ki gai. So these are the reason you can say, this is evident for the Pakistan, then these are the region with Nepal, these are the region with Bangla Bangladesh. So I think most of you must be aware of the basic parts and this also comprises from here till Srinagar region, right? So a total of about 2,962 border villages in five states were developed under this scheme. So there can be a question that which all are the states upon which the vibrant villain program is going to be developed. So this is a kind of a homework that you have to check which are the five states. Now way forward, ki baat kare, uh, basically the vibrant village program has rolled out with the center specifically to have a definite part of the development when it comes to social and economic transformation. This will also aid the border areas by making them more safe and secure, covering the holistic development. It will also bring borders to a national mainstream and make it more vibrant, developed it, and even call for a self-sufficiency in the region. And this will be a milestone in the development of border village and progress in the Himalayan state that will be there. Now, moving to the MCQ questions of the day, before I proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. For first question, the correct option is C. For second question, the correct option is A. Today's MCQ for practice. With respect to Swar Dharohar festival, consider the following statement. The festival aims to showcase iconic art and architectures. It is organized by the Ministry of Culture. So you have to check for the correct option, which among the following is the correct one. And the second question of the day with regard to Rabi crop. According to the Ministry of Agriculture, the area under the Rabi has increased by 9% from the year, uh, year ago. And many parts of the Northwest are the key producing of wheat, mustard, chana, and messy wider season due to likely subsidized activities of the Western disturbance. So do check it out for the correct option. This is a contemporary come conceptual based question which will be relevant for the examination also. So this was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.